Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, boy, this is a very serious broadcast tonight. If you watch our Patreon channel on Israeli News Live, you've already known about this information for some time coming, but we haven't talked about dates. We've talked about probability. We've talked about uh, energy waves coming in. We've talked about the magnetosphere dropping. Uh, we even published on YouTube for the first time going into Mike from around the world on Pastor Paul Begley's program and where he's been talking about the veil dropping, uh, which is the magnetosphere, seeing things like you've never seen before. And he'd say, not too distant future, you're going to see these things. All right. Well, I'm here to give you a new update and a new briefing. This is a breaking story. Uh, I got a message directly out of Israel earlier today. And what I'm about to share with you, let me put a little disclosure here from the very beginning. This information is still probability. We do not know for sure what's going to happen. But I know time frames of the events happening now. Will the magnetosphere completely drop? According to my counterpart in Washington, the answer is no. Is it enough from the energy waves that will be striking our magnetosphere that we will be able to see a breach in the magnetosphere that will allow you to see in space? The answer is a probability yes. But no one knows for certain 100%. So let me first state in this, everything I'm going to speak to you about, even though you're going to be looking at Russian news sites that are now telling these things, it is still probability. No one knows for certain 100%. So don't look at it as doomsday and everybody's scared to death and everybody goes, runs and hides and puts their heads under the pillow until all the shaking goes past. Or is there even going to be a shaking? We really just don't know as of yet. But there is a greater possibility that it could. We are in a time period that has only happened one other time in the history that we know of, and that was during the Great Flood. That's the time period we are entering into right now. The exact same events. That's what Russian media is saying to us. Israeli intelligence shared with me today, though, that the elite are going, uh, Israeli government elite are going underground. They're going underground, as it was put to me, as something to do with the dome weakening is the way it was put to me, that they're going underground and that they're not sure what's going to happen, but that all the uh, <clears throat> issues that are happening on the planet right now, whether it be uh, redirection of resources and, and, uh, and of course, uh, the economy, uh, destabilization of the economy, is all smoke and mirrors put there for you as a distraction. The real issue is what's going to happen above. The way the Israelis put it is because of the weakening of the magnetosphere, we are at a much greater risk of asteroids and meteorites hitting the earth than ever before. So those people out there that like to tell you, oh, you don't have to worry about those people that scare you about giant asteroids hitting the earth because after all, the earth has this magnetic core, causes a magnetic magnetosphere, which is a buffer against big asteroids coming in. Yeah, a little bitty meteorites might slip in because they don't have much iron content, but the big ones can never hit the earth because guess what? We got a magnetosphere and boom, it shields everything off the earth. That is true. That is true. But when the earth is being bombarded by energy waves that cause your magnetosphere to be violently attacked and weakened as a result, whatever is in the neighborhood could come tumbling down. That is a probability. 
does not mean that it will happen. So all the little naysayers out there that are going to watch this and say, oh, Steve said last year this is all going to happen and nothing ever happened. Well, even the Russians are talking about this as well. So, again, things are probability. We don't know for sure. But it's the other reason why we had the XP-37 up in space for 900 days trying to put in a grid system, a laser grid system, to be able to detect these smaller asteroids that could be a potential hazard for us so that when the magnetosphere was taking these huge punches, we would have a way to protect ourselves. I actually have here on the, on the here, it's one of the um, on, uh, Russian news channels there, and what they're depicting there is how that these energy waves are also affecting the health of people on the earth. Uh, you are going to be impacted. And by the way, tomorrow, the 19th and the 20th, are going to be the first two days where we're going to get by, hit by these, magnet, uh, these waves that are going to be hitting the earth. And then again on the 26th and 27th. Let's go into one of these Russian articles right here for you. Uh, and it's already translated in English for you. Uh, I don't know the name of that in English there. Career, uh, S-R-E-D-A dot R-U. I'll put a link in the description for you below, as well as to our Patreon channel for those of you that like to catch a lot of this information that normally only shows up there. But because of the seriousness of the information, I have decided to put it here for everyone to be able to see. January 19th, 2023, magnetic storm pulsating waves of solar plasma. And by the way, this is, I was told long ago by my own counterpart, like I said, Russian media tends to still tell their people, whereas America will never tell anybody it's all classified over here. All right. Anyway, uh, this is what they're saying to you. This is what Mike from around the world has been warning you about. So let's listen to see what they have to say here. Pulsating waves of solar plasma paused for 11 years to attack the magnetosphere. So see, even 11 years ago, they were anticipating this to happen, but there was some type of pause. A flurry of powerful geostrikes attacked the Earth. The Earth's magnetosphere will have to experience stress, chaotic solar flares began to attack the me uh, Medo paths with powerful geostrikes with a force of three points. Now, I'm not really sure what the point system means. I'm just going to read it to you what it says. Desi despite scientists' prediction that solar flares are over, the main star of the galaxy is again behaving obstinately, the sun's plasma is extremely hot and continues to run amok, provoking pulsating solar flares that range from class C to class M. The last time on January the 19th, the strength of the flares reached class M in 2012. Eleven years have passed since then. Such unfavorable space weather is already inexorably uh, affecting the Earth. Since the evening of January the 18th, the magnetosphere began to be attacked by geostrikes that, that with a force of three points, according to previously published forecast on January the 20th. The situation will worsen and the Earth will plunge into a more violent storm, which will reach the mark of five points. Now, by the way, with just the three points, Pastor Anthony, who will be on with me come Friday night, was sharing with me that the magnetosphere actually rolled back as a result of that. On January 19, 2023, the magnetosphere weather on the Earth will be unstable. Geoshocks and large squall with short breaks will attack the magnetosphere with powerful impacts on the red zone of activity relating to the upper boundary of Class C or class medium power, however, the situation may change. The sun, again, decides to act not according to the scenario. From midnight to 6 a.m., as well as from 12 noon to 6 p.m., and from 9 p.m. to midnight on New Day, Moscow time. Now, by the way, 6 a.m., <clears throat> and as well as from 12 noon to 6 p.m., we are about... 
uh, if I remember right, when I lived in Europe, we were six hours different in time. So you're about seven hours difference in time between there and here. So seven or 12 uh, noon would be more like around 5 a.m. hour time. So, but they're also talking about from midnight uh, to 6 a.m., which basically we would be getting, we're probably getting hit. Well, that there again, is that picking up tomorrow? I guess that's tomorrow midnight to 6 a.m. So that would put it roughly our time, I would say around 5 p.m. our time, starting 5 p.m. Eastern time, uh, going on to about 11 p.m. And then again from 6 p.m. to, uh, excuse me, 12 noon to 6 p.m. noon time their time, so later that morning for us, uh, around 5 a.m. going into about 11 p.m. our time. So tomorrow, we're going we're gonna to start off with a shaky day. During these hours, meteorologists especially need to take care of themselves since feelings of fatigue, apathy, apathy, uh, excuse me, apathy heaviness in the body and head, jumps in blood pressure and headaches are inevitable. Well, that would explain why my wife went through massive migraines the other day. Because again, we were hit just the other day, but not as strong. Three points. We're going into five points this time around. From 6 a.m. to 12 noon, as well as from 6 p.m. to 6, uh, to 9 p.m. Moscow time, the situation will relatively calm. However, geostrikes, the impact of the earlier geostrikes will continue to be absolute. Now again, this is going to happen on the 26th of January and the 31st. All right, and I haven't even clicked on this article here. Uh, I'll go ahead and open it up, but I have not clicked on it. It's going to go ahead and translate it for us there. Um, in the second half of January, several dangerous bursts of solar activity are expected. Uh, here we got well, we even got better dates on this here. We have it on January 12th. I okay, see, and, and here's the interesting thing. We took very serious sickness here with us right at the time that we were getting hit with these other dates there, uh, going back to the 15th and the 16th. And then, um, but let's see, the 21st, we got a three magnitude storm. January 22nd, 24th, the calm expected before a new wave of magnetic storms. And then January 26th, another geostrike will come with a force of five points. January 27th, four-point burst of solar activity. Hopefully, uh, Pastor Anthony will be able to give us a little bit more knowledge on this because I know he's, he's done a lot of studying in this area too. January 28th, a surge of a force of three points is predicted. January 29th and 30th, absence of dangerous burst of solar activity. But on January 31st, a four-point geostrike is expected to begin. All right, so you've got that information. Also, Space Frequency News on January 18th of 2023. Now, they get into some things I'm not into when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, oh, wow, you know, certain solar or this and that and everything. I don't get into that. But this, I think the first part here is important. To date, Indonesia has experienced a total of 110 earthquakes of magnitude 6.0 to 7.0. There was a solar flare class M1, which caused, of course, the ejection of the coronal mass of great force. Aurora signaling a plasma, proton, electron, ion, particles are observed all over the globe. Our sun is poised for more M-class flares. There's still the possibility of more X-class flares in the coming days, though not so much occurrences are expected today says the number of the neutrons uh, is increased at a KP index is rated unsettled, indicating that it could increase to the level of storm if cosmic events become more intense. The magnetosphere is once again surrounded and shrouded in a particle plasma of positive protons, negative electrons, and zero change neutrons, which can li uh, uh, act like positive protons, and the electrons are uh, severely de uh, depleted. 
says this year 2023 will be filled with powerful planetary transits that will radically change the life stream of humanity now i think that's when they get into the kind of goofy stuff that i'm just not into uh another thing too this is from an article that i had on vk it says a powerful magnetic storm will will cover the earth with the next two days in the coming days, uh, and of course, it's just repeating a lot of what we just read there, so I won't go into that again, but it's going up to the five points. But I want to come to this part here. Traditionally, such phenomena have an impact on weather-dependent people. They feel unwell and uh, an excre excre ex excuse me, exacerbate chronic diseases. They will be able to feel the deterioration of their health already today and on January 27th when the magnetosphere will not yet reach the level of magnetic storm but will also be excited. Also, during periods of solar activity, failures in the operation of equipment are likely since the solar wind which is formed during a coronal mass ejection in the sun has a strong effect on spacecraft which leads to interruptions in communications, transmission of television signals, navigation systems, and so on. Those of you that watch our Patreon channel know we've already warned you of those uh, probabilities as well. Satellite failures, communication failures, etc. We've warned about that, but then remember also, this is also the time where you may see that magnetosphere open up. You might see things you've never seen before. We've already detected uh, ancient artifacts and stuff like old Roman buildings and things like that coming from around the sun from a previous disaster. That was from the passing of Planet X some 3,600 years ago. And we realize that if, and I say we realize, that's the, 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 the uh, Pentagon scientists know that if the magnetosphere does open up enough to where you can see beyond the veil, there is a great possibility you will see those items come past the earth and then wonder where the heck did that ever come from, right? So, uh, and listen, I will t share with you one thing. I think I have one here. Yeah, I do. <clears throat> this is something I had bought from my family uh, and a little while back, uh, it you don't have to have this particular thing. It's called the golden cocoon. It's made out of a material that protects your head from EMF radiation, that type of stuff there. But you can get stuff like that. You can buy it online. You can wear stuff like this during these types of storms to help protect you from the, uh, the intense things. But also, like right now, I'm inside of my metal barn. My metal barn also protects you. Any type of Faraday cage will protect you from these net, these types of magnetic waves that come through. And quite frankly, you know, the old-fashioned thing they used to say, oh, they got a tinfoil hat on. Well, believe it or not, a tinfoil hat will work as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. Don't be mean to be the bearer of bad news or anything like that, but I think it's always better to be warned about things, be aware of things going on. Let's hope nothing happens. Maybe nothing will happen. It'll just go by like any other night. And if that's the case, praise God and thank God for it. But if not, if not, um, it's not the end of the world either, by the way, guys. I don't mean it by that when I'm telling you these things there. Even if we did have meteorites come in and stuff, we're not talking about doomsday meteorites, you know. It'd be like like when you go out and see these, one of these meteorite showers and you can see a bunch of them coming down. The only difference is, is uh, you may have a few more of those rocks hit the ground than what, uh, that are anticipated. But even what I was told about that, most of that would still be in the oceans because more than two-thirds of the earth is under the oceans anyway. So that's where they anticipate most of it to fall. Uh, there is anticipated to be tidal waves, but that is only if a big one were to come in. And I don't think that is in this first set of storms that are going on. We have other events going on this year. But I will keep you posted the best I can with information that's factual uh, and, and I had the factual information to back up what I'm saying here. So I wanted to make sure that everybody knew about this, not just our friends on Patreon, which we do love you and, and thank you for your support there uh, and support the broadcast, IsraeliNewsLive.org, our mailing address. It's always above my head there, uh, but you can also donate online and we appreciate your help to keep this word going there. We have two special guests coming up this week. Also, Yana and I are going to be doing part three on the message that I'm doing with her as a special guest. 
but also I've got John Moore coming on this coming Sunday, Pastor Anthony uh, coming on Friday night. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Talk to you soon.